there, my name is Sarah Harnish. I'm a Young Living Diamond, the author of the Game Plan series, the number one bestseller on Amazon, and a member of the Oilability team. I've also been a radio network news anchor for 18 years in Chicago and New York. Someone put this audio CD in your hand because they care about you deeply and about the things that are in your home. They care about your family. Walk with me for half an hour about why you need to take that seriously. I'll show you the dangers hidden inside your own cabinets and then simple, easy ways to start swapping things out without breaking the bank. Let's start at the beginning. The number two cause of death in the United States is cancer. Cancer expenditures in 2011 were $88 billion. 1,620 people a day die of cancer, and there are 10,000 new cases a year among children. One in three cases in the U.S. are directly linked to poor diet, physical inactivity, weight, or chemical exposure. The American Cancer Society says only 5 to 10 percent of all cancer cases are from gene defects. 5 percent. That means 95 percent of cancer cases are under our control. It's what we're allowing into our homes. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health studied 2,983 ingredients in our products at home. And of that, they found 884 toxic ingredients. 314 of them caused biological mutations. 218 caused reproductive problems. 778 were toxic to the human body. 146 they knew caused cancer tumors, but they were still allowed in the United States, even though they were banned in other countries around the world. 376 caused eye and skin irritation. These chemicals are allowed in nearly every type of cleaning supplies in the United States, even common things under your cabinets right now. Even organic cleaners have some known carcinogens that are just naturally derived. 26 seconds after exposure, chemicals are found in measurable amounts inside the human body. The average woman applies 300 chemicals to her body every single day, 80 of them before breakfast. The top 10 most dangerous chemicals in our home are air fresheners like plug-ins or candles. Second on the list, chemical cleaning supplies for your counters and floors and toilets, as well as drain and oven cleaners and furniture polish dishwasher soap and dish soap, beauty supplies and personal care products like hairspray, gel, shampoo, deodorant. And one of the top pollutants in the family home is laundry soap and fabric softener. You wash your clothes, it sits on your skin, it outgasses in your closet all night long. That information was from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Top 10 Killer Household Chemical Study. So what happens when your body is chemically overloaded? Well, you may see it in something as catastrophic as cancer, but most of us feel it in other ways like lethargy, inability to focus, sleep trouble, chronic inflammation, unexplained pain, fibromyalgia, skin issues like adult acne, hormones, hot flashes, stress and anxiety and fear. If you face any of these issues, it's time to kick chemicals to the curb. You can control what you allow within the walls of your home. I wrote a book on our story that can show you how simple it is to get your oils for free. It's called Game Plan, and that's available on our team website at Oil team.com. Young Living is an essential oils company that's based out of Utah. In fact, it's the largest essential oils company in the world and a pioneer in the art of distillation. Their methods have been copied all over the globe. They were the first food-grade oils company on earth. They produce the most oils on the planet, and they do it right through their seed-to-seal process. If you want to learn more, I've recorded several lectures on DVD or an audio CD. I recommend the 101 lecture, which is a ground-up, fast-paced study on all things essential oils for the brand new oiler. Why am I so passionate about getting rid of chemicals? Well, let me take a moment and just share my story with you. I was introduced to essential oils about two years ago, but my story goes all the way back to when I was 12 years old, and I'm almost 40 years old right now. 12 years old is when I had my very first migraine headache. And if any of you guys have ever had a migraine headache before, you know how incredibly debilitating they are. When I would get these things, the right side of my face would droop. I'd have debilitating pain. I'd be grabbing my knees. I'd have tremors. I'd have diarrhea. They would last about 10 days a month on a bell curve. And most months I went into the emergency room and got a migraine cocktail, which is a trio of drugs that they give you. One is a pain medication. One's an anti-nauseant. So you stop that cycle of throwing up from the pain and don't get dehydrated. And then also an anti-inflammatory to help with the swelling that was happening. And I had been to 13 different um, neurologists. I've been on 16 different families of migraine medicines. And 
after a while, they started doing yearly MRIs. And what they were finding was happening was the blood vessels on my on my brain were swelling. And it was causing little tiny pinprick brain bleeds every single month that I would get these things. And so once a year, I'd go in, get another MRI done, and they'd compare from the scans from the year before. And they found that I was having about 30 to 40 more spots of dead tissue on the surface of my brain every single year because of these migraine headaches. So finally, they sent me to um, a specialist. And I saw him for about six weeks, and he wanted to put me on a whole bunch of medications, an anti-inflammatory pain medication, a steroid. He wanted to put me on a couple of medications to counteract the side effects of the first medications that I was on, an anti-nauseant. And I got home, and I lined them all up on my counter. And I looked at him, and just the steroid alone had two and a half pages of warnings on it, and most of them were heart-related. And I was born with a tricuspid regurgitation of my heart, so that means one of my large valves in my heart backflows, and then also a level five heart murmur. So I got a pretty decent um, heart murmur as well. And I took the medication back to the neurologist that I was seeing, and I said, you know, I kind of feel like I'm choosing between a heart attack or a stroke. You told me that if I don't take this medicine, that I'm at a risk for a catastrophic stroke because of what's happening already in my brain with these little brain bleeds, these little pinprick brain bleeds. But I'm looking at the side effects and it looks like I could have a heart attack if I take these things with the weakness that my heart already has. And the neurologist told me, yes, you know, you are choosing between a heart attack or a stroke. But if it was me, I would pick the heart attack because then you're gone. If you have a stroke, you literally can watch your children grow up. And I've got five amazing kids. We call them the harnessed herd. They're 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, four sons and a daughter. And he said, you literally can watch your kids grow up and never be able to communicate with them. And I think that would be worse. And I remember walking out of that meeting thinking to myself, my word, why would you make that decision for me? So I went home and I told my husband that I was going to try to, to heal these migraines homeopathically. And he laughed. So we got engaged when I was 16 years old. We've been married for almost 20 years. And I remember him looking at me. He goes, you're going to have a slice of lemon and you're going to get rid of these migraines. And I said, no, I go, but I bet you there's somebody out there that has cured these things without all of these drugs. So I started applying what I knew about my news background. I've been a news anchor for 18 years. And so I'm good at researching things. I, I read 39 newspapers every morning that I come in to anchor news. And so I took what I knew about researching and digging for primary sources and applied it to my health. I wanted to know if anybody out there had ever been cured of these things. I would love to tell you that oils played a role in that, but they really didn't. This was before I was introduced to essential oils. But it started my journey of being aware of what's around me. And I stumbled on a website called gapsdiet.com, G-A-P-S. It's gut and psychology syndrome, and it's written by a neurologist who had cured many, many people in her office of anything digestive and anything neurological. And her premise behind it was that if you heal the gut, you heal the head. Because by eating poorly, you puncture holes in your gut lining, and then your body cannot produce some hormones correctly, like serotonin, which is manufactured much of it in the gut. And it regulates so many functions in the human body. And when the body is not manufacturing those things correctly, then it starts monasticizing as different ways. Your body starts screaming for help. And for some people, it might be pain or it might be skin issues or swelling. Or for me, it was migraine headaches. So I went on this diet, which I'm convinced is the most masochistic thing on the face of the earth. And the first month that I was on, it's no sugar, no gluten, and no dairy. So no sugar at all, no gluten, not even gluten-free stuff like celiacs people can have, and then no dairy as well. And the first month I was on it, I still had the drooping and the weakness in the right side of my face, but I didn't have any pain. And I remember turning to my husband and I said, honey, if this is as good as it gets is I spend the rest of my life with a droopy, weird looking face and weakness on the right side of my body, but I don't have any pain. That's good enough for me. I've been in pain since I was 12 years old, 10 days a month with these migraines, and I don't even know what a life of no pain feels like. And so the first month I had that drooping on my right side, which I'd had for many, many years because of the migraines. And then the second month, that drooping was gone and the pain was gone. And this year will be four years since I have had a migraine headache. I completely cured them solely by changing what I was eating. And I became really, really good at looking at the ingredients of everything that I was putting into my body because the diet was so strict and what I could eat and what I couldn't eat. And there's so many fake ingredients out there, even in the organic section, that I really needed to take it seriously if I wanted to heal. And so I got very good at weeding out all of the fake ingredients, like the tapioca root and the arrowroot powder and potato flour and the rice flour, all those things I couldn't have. I had to flip everything over and read it. 
And I started thinking about him like, you know, if sugar, gluten, and dairy, so we're talking about a sandwich and some ice cream, if those could puncture holes in my gut lining by the time that I was in my 30s to the point that I was having brain bleeds every single month and was in excruciating pain, what about the chemicals in my house? Not even a piece of bread, but what about my bright blue dish soap or what I use to wipe my counters down with and it actually has chemicals in it and I'm breathing that stuff in or I'm wiping down my butcher block and it says right on the bottle, poisonous, not for human consumption. And then three days later, I go cut my fresh strawberries uh, on it and I eat them and you can still smell that chemical smell on your counters and on your butcher block. So I started thinking about all of those things and that was what led me to explore essential oils, which have been used for thousands and thousands of years. Um, It's just amazing the capability that they have to support different systems in the human body, um, to be used for cleaning, to be used for personal care products. And that's where Young Living comes in. I got invited to my first essential oils class in 2014, got a starter kit, and I have never looked back. And so I'm in the same journey with you and swapping many of these chemicals out of my home. So what exactly are essential oils? Well, they're the most powerful part of the plant. They're the lifeblood of the plant. They repair and restore the plant when it's attacked or when it's injured. In the human body, they've got access to the limbic lobe of the brain, that part of the brain that controls your heart rate, your breathing, your memory, stress, blood pressure. Oils are really tiny. They're smaller than viruses. They hit your cells in three seconds when they're inhaled and 26 seconds when applied topically. In the first week that I had my Young Living starter kit, I used it over 80 times successfully. So why would you want oils in your home? Well, they don't have any yuck. They're just the steam distilled plant. There are millions of uses to support systems in the human body, like your cardiovascular system or your endocrine system, which affects hormones, to support your joints or your brain or your liver. They're used to replace chemical cleaning supplies, thieves cleaner, is a cleaner that's made just out of plants and essential oils. And that's all I use to wipe down my bathroom, my kitchen, my stove, mop my floors. And it's just oils and then plants. You can use oils to replace your personal care products. Young Living has an entire line of shampoos, soaps, conditioners, eye creams, face washes, and it's all completely chemical free. If you use oil infused supplements, you get the benefit of the supplement along with the power of the oil. And Young Living has some of the best protein powder that I've ever seen. Protein is a brain food that helps you think clearly and lose weight. It does matter, though, where your oils are sourced. 